Hello, my name is Joanna and I'm feeling crafty. Uh, I have a little tutorial for you today. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make um, a, uh, a little glasses case like this one. And it has, can you, can you hear the snap? I love it, so satisfying. Uh, so it has this uh, fun uh, snap closure. Um, the case itself is fully lined with no raw edges. All the seams are concealed on the inside and it has a channel here for the snap closure. Okay, to make the uh, snap closure, uh, what uh, we're going to be using is a piece of a measuring tape. So that's the secret ingredient of this recipe. <laughs> so here's uh, what you're going to need to make your own um, uh, little case like that. You are going to need an outer fabric that measures 8 inches by 10 inches. This is my template here. Um, so that's going to be the outer piece and it's a little longer than the, uh, sorry, that's the lining piece and it's a bit longer than the outer piece because you fold it out on the outside, which uh, provides a lovely pop of contrast color. So that's your lining piece, uh, eight by 10. Then you need a, um the fabric for your outer and that is uh that measure is eight by eight and you will also need a, a piece of uh wadding wadding batting um foam uh any anything that will provide a little bit of cushioning because the cargo we're going to be carrying in that case is uh, fairly precious um, so we want to protect that. So that's uh, the um, wadding. I'm going to be using cotton wadding and that measures seven by eight inches. We will also need a, a strip of one inch interfacing and we will use that only to interface that top part of the lining. We don't want to stiffen the entire lining because it might be a little bit uh, scratchy against the glasses so that's why I'm just using a strip so one inch by uh, eight inches so eight inches long one inch wide now for the secret ingredient we will uh, use a piece of uh, three and a half inches piece of uh, metal measuring tape okay and uh, we are going to uh, round the edges of the um, of the uh, you know where we cut it off. So we cut a three and a half inches um, piece, and you need to round the edges. Make sure you're not using your fabric scissors for that. Now, be very careful with that because this is very sharp and those bits that are going to fly are super sharp as well. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so uh, be very careful with that. Maybe wear a pair of glasses or safety goggles so this doesn't go flying. So once your edge is uh, nicely rounded, you're going to take a piece of masking tape and just uh, secure them on the edges so that when they are in the channel, they're not going to rip your fabric. Uh, as I said, the edges of this um, measuring tape um, is quite sharp. So just a stick a little bit of masking tape on each end and you're golden. So you need two pieces um, of that. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take the piece that's going to be our lining. If your uh, fabric is directional, make a decision as to which part is going to be the top and uh, be mindful that we are flipping this out okay so um it's going to be uh just mind that direction yeah so uh if that makes sense 
so this is how that's going to go yeah you're going to fold it like that so if it, if your fabric is directional be mindful of that okay so once you have decided which part is the top which is the bottom you're going to flip it to the wrong side you're going to take your marking tool and your ruler and you're going to mark an inch and a quarter from the top okay now i went a little bit ahead of myself and as you can see i um, have already interfaced my uh my piece so once you have that marking you're going to take your one inch strip of interfacing and you're going to fuse it the shiny side down you're going to fuse it to the top edge of your lining now uh, you might have noticed that there's going to be quarter of an inch uh, that's not interfaced and that's going to be the seam allowance. Um, so to, to reduce the bulk, this is why we're not interfacing that bit, okay? So take that to your ironing board, align your piece of interfacing with that line, fuse it, and we're good to go to the next step. So while that iron is hot, uh, we are going to prepare the um, channels for for our measuring tape okay uh, so we're going to take the lining fabric and our marking tool and we are going to measure two inches and a quarter from the top okay and uh, so we're going to draw a line that is two and a quarter inches long, and it's going to be quarter of an inch uh, wide, okay? And we're going to do that on both sides. Okay, see how I'm lining the edge of the fabric with the quarter of an inch marking on my ruler. Okay, and once I have marked that, I'm going to take my fabric scissors and I am going to do a little snip that is quarter of an inch on both sides. And once that's done, I am going to take it to the okay. ironing. So I'm going to fold that uh, bit that I just marked on that line that I drew I'm going to first finger press it and then I'm going to press it with my iron okay and I'm going to do that on the other side as well so now that my um, openings are prepared I press them I'm going to uh, flip it to the right side okay and then i'm going to put my outer piece on top of my lining piece and as you can see on top they're not lining up because of those folds that we made so just make sure they line up on the top and the sides here okay so everything is lining up and then i'm going to put my wadding on top now I want, I don't want that wadding to be in my seam allowances, okay? So I have roughly eyeballed around a half an inch from the bottom and about um, half an inch uh, from the top. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to draw a line. I'll measure a, an inch and a quarter from the top see how i'm aligning the edge of the fabric with that quarter of an inch marking on my ruler and i'm going to draw a line now this line is going to be my stitch line okay all right so i'm going to put a few pins And I'm pinning perpendicular to my stitch line, just so it's easy to 
remove my pins as I go. That is how I do it. That's not necessarily the right way to do it, but that's what works for me. It might work for you too, okay? So I have that pinned and I'm going to bring that to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch along that line that I just Okay, drew. so I'm at my sewing machine right now. Now, when you start stitching, um, the um, your lining pieces uh, piece that's underneath uh, is folded, okay? So just run your finger there and make sure it's still folded because uh, you're kind of stitching it blind. So just make sure it's... Uh, it's folded where we pressed it, okay? Now, we are stitching it with a straight stitch. We are going to back stitch, always back stitch. If in doubt, back stitch anyway, okay? We're going to go forward. We're going to remove that pin because we do not stitch through pins. And we're going to do a straight stitch along the line and we're going to back stitch. And as you approach the other side of it, uh, again, run your finger underneath and make sure that that piece that we pressed is still folded. Okay, and stitch over it and back stitch. So I stitched my line here and I'm uh, at my ironing board now and I'm going to flip this uh, lining side towards me and I'm going to, that seam allowance there, I'm going to tuck it under, okay? And I'm going to give this a press, oh, which is very awkward to do around the tripod but the things I do for you guys okay so I'm just setting those seams there okay and then once we do that we are going to uh, do a couple of lines of stitching we're going to join the dots you know you see that uh, corner here I'm going to join those and I'm going to draw a line which should measure uh, one inch Okay, so I drew a line there and because the lining is going to be folded, we want to secure it on top so that our piece of a measuring tape doesn't travel, if you know what I mean. So we're going to just put a stitch here to prevent that uh, from happening. We will also put a stitch here, which I have not done on this prototype because I only thought about it afterwards. Uh, so we're going to put another stitch here again to stop that uh, piece of measuring tape from traveling. So I'm going to fold this in half to find the center point. I'm going to do a little crease with my fingers and then I'm going to mark can you see that? Uh, can, I'm going to mark that crease, okay? So I'm going to increase my stitch length to three and I'm going to back stitch here, stitch all the way to the other side, back stitch here and do a little stitch in here as well. I'm going to grab underneath and make sure everything is lined up. And I'm going to... So we're stitching through three layers, okay? That folded uh, piece of lining, the top piece of lining and the outer fabric as well, okay? Now, before I stitch this little stitch, I forgot one step. Uh, we're going to trim down this piece of wadding because we don't need it in where the measuring tape is going to go. So I'm just going to trim it down just a little bit. Okay, so all these uh, stitches that we're doing, we're doing all that to prepare the channels for our measuring tape. So I'm going to go back to my sewing machine and take that little stitch. Okay, so the channel for the measuring tapes is ready. I have the openings that are nice and neat because I folded them under. I 
stitched uh, the stitch that's going to be on top of the channel here and I also stitched in the middle which is going to be here on the fold to prevent the um, measuring tape from sliding. So believe it or not we are two stitches away from finishing this beautiful uh, case. So what we're going to do next we're going to fold this in half and we're going to grab pins. Now the first thing you're going to do you're going to make sure that our those channels there are matching so we're align those and we're going to put a pin there and then I'm going to make sure that this one is aligned as well and I'll put a pin there so I'm going to pin all around it because we will be stitching uh, uh, we're going to so this is going to be our lining side so that will get tucked inside there okay so we're going to start stitching from this corner we're going to back stitch here we're using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance which is the width of your presser foot uh, the distance between the needle and the edge of the presser foot so we will just be making sure that ev everything that the presser foot is aligned flush with the edge of the fabric okay so we'll start here back stitch here to the corner will pivot we are going to leave ourselves couple of inches of an opening so we can turn this bad boy to the right side okay about here okay I'll put another pin here and then we're going to be quite careful stitching through here because we do not want to catch that fold in the stitches right and we're stitching it blind because that fold is on the inside but it's quite bulky so you should be able to feel it with your fingers so preferably i'll take these pins i would like that stitch to happen right in front of that fold okay which is uh, going to be quite tricky to do because we're going in uh, blind but we'll do our best okay so back at the sewing machine and i'm going to start stitching from my uh, lining okay so uh, the the seam allowance is around one centimeter which is the distance between the needle and the edge of the presser foot and i am lining up uh, the edge of the presser foot with my fabric okay so the first thing i'm going to do yes you guessed it i'm going to backstitch and then i'm going to get to that corner i'll move that pin and i'm going to leave my needle down i'm going to lift my presser foot and i'm going to shout like ross and say pivot and I'll continue stitching for about an inch and I'm going to back stitch here because I'm leaving the two inch opening uh, in my lining okay so I'll do a bit of a back stitch okay and I'm going to not even going to break my threads I'm so lazy and again I'm going to start stitching on the other side of the opening by back stitching and then I'm going to go forward. Now I'm getting to the tricky part which is the bit where our openings are. So if you run your finger there you can kind of feel where the opening is. Um, okay. Now 
Now you uh, remember how we placed the wadding about half an inch from the bottom and that is because we don't want that wadding in that uh, bottom seam. It will just give us nice and sharp corners uh, when we flip our case. So I'm just going to go off the wadding. I'll take one more stitch and I'll pivot again. And, and as you can see, I'm not stitching the wadding here at all, okay? And I'm going to do what? Yes, back stitch. So the next step is to clip our corners. But before I do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach through my opening, okay? And I'm going to take a peep at this area here to make sure I did not catch anything I wasn't supposed to in my stitches and my the openings are free can you see them there they're not cut in this in my stitches which is what I want okay so all is golden and what I can do now is to clip my corners and on the other side you don't ha really need to clip those because they're on the on the fold and uh, we're going to flip this uh, through the way I like to do it and I left myself didn't I tell you guys to leave two inches opening and look I only left an inch so this is going to be a very difficult birth of a um, glasses case <laughs> so I'm going to reach my palm inside there until I reach the opposite corner and I'm just going to push that corner with my um, index finger inside and push it all the way through. So I'm going to do that one corner at a time. Okay, so I have my corner out and I'm going to be pulling it out. So it was quite difficult, but I did manage to push it through. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a... Um, a chopstick which is a very important sewing tool i'm going to put a chopstick and push out these corners and it's quite easy to do because we don't have that wadding there so look they look so nice and sharp okay now we don't really need to push out uh, the these corners of the lining because they're going to go in on themselves uh, anyway so we're going to quickly bring this to the ironing board and remember that opening that we left there, we are going to tuck it in nice and neat, give it a press, and then we're going to stitch it shut. So I'm going to stitch closed uh, that opening. Now it's kind of hard to tell where uh, it's uh, where the opening starts. So I like to make a little dot there. Let me see where the other side of it is there. So I can kind of go over that point. And uh, we're going to stitch this with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. So we're going to stay very close to the edge. We're going to back stitch at the beginning. Okay. And then we're going to go to the other side. You can, of course, stitch this by hand to, to make it look nice and neat. Uh, but... You guessed it, I'm way too lazy for that. And I'm going to backstitch. Okay, we're nearly finished. And uh, that's all the machine sewing that uh, we will do. Uh, the rest is going to be done by hand. So the first thing we're going to, to do is kind of tuck the, the lining to the inside and push these corners. Um, I know I look like I'm very clumsy doing this. It's just doing it on the camera is a bit awkward. So uh, I assure you, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, but I am. Okay, so again, I'm going to reach my thumb into that corner and I'm going to push it into this corner. Okay, until I get in there or so I think. And then I'm going to pinch it and then I'll pull it and then I'll kind of poke around with my um, chopstick to push in the other side. Now what's also good to use is just a ruler. You can just stick your ruler there 
and just make sure everything is tucked in neatly. Okay, so I poked everything nice and neatly using my ruler and my chopstick. And now I'm ready to insert the uh, measuring tape uh, strips inside the channels. So where you're going to place the uh, measuring tape is in between these pieces of lining here, okay? Now the way you're going to insert it is with that kind of bump. See how there is a dent? So you want that dent to go towards the middle yeah because they 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 want to be kissing like that when they're in there yeah like that and that's where the the snappy situation which obviously is a proper english term for it is going to be happening so we're going to insert them uh, in here and then we're going to do one at a time because it just makes it a little bit easier we're going to poke it in there until it reaches that uh, seam there all the way and we're going to do a little slip stitch here okay uh, i'm not going to do the slip stitch on camera there's plenty of tutorials so i did slip stitch uh, this side and now i'm going to insert the other strip and the the bumpy bit towards the middle and i'm going to push it all the way to that seam there as you can see my needle my hand needle is still dangling there because uh, i didn't want to break the thread because i am just going to use the same thread and then stitch the other side now both sides are now stitched and uh, we can have a little play with this opening which is the most satisfying part of this project so you stick your finger in there and you open it you put your glasses I should have brought my glasses up to my sewing room, shouldn't I? Just to demonstrate. And then you do this, listen. <gasps> um, I own a cr Cricut machine, so I cut myself a little uh, sunglasses iron-on um, vinyl uh, to put on those uh, to make them extra pretty. And there you have it. How cute is that little pouch? I think this uh, snap opening is uh, just the most clever thing there is. So if you uh, own a Cricut uh, machine, you can um, embellish it with whatever it is that you want. Um, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please give it thumbs up or maybe even a little comment and um maybe subscribe i know i've been quite patchy uh, posting lately but i'm hoping uh, to get back to it uh, and if you found this tutorial um useful and actually used it and made your very own one of these please 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 pretty please tag me on instagram i'm at joanna's feeling crafty on uh, instagram i would love to see your creations it's very satisfying when people use my patterns um so yeah i hope you find some time for feeling a little crafty yourself wherever you are bye